All right, I want to jump back into our journey through Proverbs today, and uh, we're uh, going to continue our march. Uh, just quickly, I want to read the introduction to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, it says, These are Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. The reason the book of Proverbs was written is to teach people wisdom and discipline to help us understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose, verse 3, is to teach people to live disciplined and, what's that word? What's that word? Successful. successful lives. God don't want you failing. He wants you to be successful. And he wants you to live a successful life. To help us do what is three words. What are they? To help us do what is right and just and fair. Amazing. Verse 4. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple. I like that. Knowledge and discernment to the young. So, verse 5. Let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Smarty pants. And let those with understanding receive guidance. How? By exploring the meaning in these Proverbs and parables the words of the wise and their riddles. So that's what we're doing. We're exploring the, the meaning in these proverbs and parables as we march through them. And we've been doing this for two years and we're on chapter 13. So we're about halfway through, almost halfway through. But uh, uh, we, are, we are not there yet, but we're, we're getting there. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. It's where we are today. We're going to read 10. I'm going to skip 11 and 12. And we're going to go to 13 and 14. Verse 10 says, Pride leads to conflict. So the next time you're fighting with your spouse, hmm, there's a thought. Got pride going on. It's not about the argument. It's about I'm right. Anyway, all right, never mind. Those who take advice, however, are wise. <laughs> Verse 13, I better get on past that and leave that alone right there, okay? Verse 13 of chapter 13. 13, 13. People who despise advice are asking for trouble. Those who respect a command will succeed. So there you go, husbands. Make sure you listen to that. Okay, all right. Um, those who respect a command will succeed. Verse 14. The instructions of the wise, instruction of the wise is a life-giving fountain. Those who accept it avoid the snares of death. You know... Somewhere along the journey, I got this idea about learning from people who are doing it. Learning from people who are smarter than me. It is a very, very small-minded, weak individual who thinks they know everything. And who thinks they can't. One guy I heard say one time, I can learn from everyone I meet. In that they know something I do not. Every person we meet, however low they may be, you think, they're really not, but you think we can learn from them. We were driving around yesterday, took uh, Janice and, and uh, her sister Eleanor over to Kenai, and uh, we uh, saw a couple of guys walking down the street over there that had had a few too many to drink or something or other, and they were a little bit inebriated, intoxicated, and I learned something. I learned how not to wear my pants. <laughs> it was an amazing lesson. And uh, my, my wife threatened my life if I ever wore them like this. So I mean, there's just something you can learn at every turn in your life if you're, if you're willing to, 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 to learn. Um, so uh, you, can, uh, you can learn. It's just absolutely amazing. But people who despise advice are asking for trouble. People who despise advice or asking for trouble. I was listening to a radio program, a radio preacher years ago. I mean, it had been 30 years ago now. And uh, I, was, um, I was a little 
taken aback at what he said. He said, people who don't pray are arrogant. Uh, wait a minute. People who don't pray are arrogant. And then he went on to explain what that means is they feel like they got it together and they don't need to ask God for help. They got it all together. They're prideful, arrogant. And, and, and so I, I just want to encourage you today to the nugget that I want to leave with you. And, and you want to, if you might want to write these three words down. But uh, if you're taking notes. But the nugget that I want to leave with you today out of these verses is. Don't despise instructions. Don't despise instruction. Proverbs 15.5 says. Only a fool despises a parent's discipline. Whoever learns from correction is wise. So young people, we got a few here today. Uh, learn from mom and them. Be willing to take advice. Be willing to learn. Only a fool despises a parent's discipline and instruction. While none of our parents were perfect. And they all were were. Seriously flawed as we are. Uh, Johnny Bowen wouldn't be half the man he is today if it wasn't for his mama Willie. And she tried to beat some sense into him over the years. and uh, Literally. <laughs> and uh, she was a wonderful lady but she didn't, she didn't let no grass grow under them boys britches. And they both went to work in the oil field and they both retired and they both provided for their family. And good. Uh, don't despise, kids, your instructions. And even looking back on our parents' instructions. My father uh, was in, in a lot of ways a very mean man, but in a lot of ways a very caring man who thought that the way he was doing it in his world and his growing and in his, his brain, he thought he was doing the right thing. He wanted to make sure I went to heaven, so he beat the other place out of me often. That was his, uh, that was his way he grew up. That was his, um, and, and so it's important that we learn. Verse, fifth, chapter 15, verse 31 to 33. says, if you listen to constructive criticism, you'll be at home among the wise. However, if you reject discipline, you don't harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you will grow in understanding. And those of you who really get this key of understanding and really learn, know and understand what understanding and, and what he means here in understanding. Someone said, he who knows how will always have a job. He who knows why will always be his boss. So when you get understanding... It's one thing to know how to do something. It's one thing to see. But when you get some, gain some understanding, that word alone is a, a great word to do a, a little word study on and look at what does it mean to, to really get understanding. Someone said wisdom is, is, is the, uh, the knowledge on how to do something, but understanding is how to apply that. Common sense. Uh, being able to apply. And that comes with, with, with uh, not rejecting correction. Someone says, how do you learn not to make mistakes? With experience. How do you get experience? Making mistakes. So you got to learn from those mistakes. Verse 33. The fear of the Lord teaches us wisdom. And humility precedes honor. One more verse in Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 25, 12. To one who listens... Valid criticism is like gold earrings or other gold jewelry. To the one who values, who listens to valid criticism, is like, well, let me back up. To the one who listens, 
Valid criticism is like a gold earring. That's why Jesus often would say, in the King James translation, it says, uh, Jesus would often say when he would be talking to people, uh, what I thought was a very, very redundant, stupid statement when I first read it. Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, we all got ears. No, we got ears, but we don't have ears to hear. In fact, it been, it says, I've lost several of y'all already. You already left the building. <laughs> you got ears and you're sitting here, but, but, but you, you're fixing it. You're out there. So uh, come back. Come back. All right, I want to jump into James, one of my favorite books in the Bible, James chapter 1. Uh, it's a powerful, powerful uh, book with a lot of great advice. And this is one of the greatest verses in the Bible, these Two of my most favorite uh, verses in the Bible is these two or three right here. And it says, understand this, hear this, now hear this, dear brothers and sisters. Be quick to listen. All you husbands need to hear this especially. I would have been so disappointed had she not done that. that was <laughs> um, we must be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And even slower, my insertion, to get angry. Quick to speak. That's why God gave us two ears and one mouth. And I keep trying to learn that. Quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. One thing I keep forgetting in communication with my wonderful bride of 43 years. One of the things, guys, let me talk to the man just a moment, okay? Uh, one of the things I keep forgetting is that when she comes to me with a problem, she does not want me to fix it most of the time. I am a fixer. By nature, if something's broke, we fix it. That's what I mean. Don't why you bring me a problem if you don't want me to fix it. And, and women's brains don't work that way. They bring us a problem because they want us to understand the problem. They, they don't want it fixed necessarily. They just want to know we hear them. And to us, that's like, really? Why would you bother? You know I understand you. One old boy's wife said to him, Honey, you don't ever tell me that you love me. He said, Darling, I told you on our wedding day I loved you. If it changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> Women just don't get that, guys. That, they don't get that. I mean, we, uh, Toby... Uh, Toby uh, Montgomery in his teaching talked one day, uh, maybe it was that Sunday morning, about in relationships, how the earth is in relationship with the sun. It's called an orbit. And it spins around and around the sun and never moves closer or further away other than very, very minimal. It stays in that orbit and it, it never changes. And that's the way we men like relationships. We like to know where our boundaries are, where our orbit, and we just kind of like... Women think in a relationship you're supposed to be moving closer together. Yeah. It's like, really? But... Uh, we we, we want to fix this. We need to be... We all... All, all, all need to be better listeners. If you want to improve your life, improve your listening skills. One man, I believe it was Dr. Gary Smalley, said, and I just shared this this week with uh, uh, some of the office staff this week. I, I, uh, Gary Smalley said he did, I believe it was him, he did a test. He literally, he did this. He was an attendant, an usher at a wedding. And after the wedding, you know, you have the, the receiving line where the bride and groom and all the, uh, the bridal party shaking hands and smiling and saying, you know, hi, hi good, thank you for coming. And, you know, he said, he did this. He stood in line, over 300 people at the wedding. 
and shook every person's hand, Bonnie. And as he shook their hand, he said, I killed my grandmother today. And he smiled and said that. I killed my grandmother today. He said one person responded to that statement. And one old guy looked at him and smiled and said, that old gal probably deserved it and went right on down the line. <laughs> and everybody else said, that's nice. Thank you. God bless you too. God bless you. And went right down the line. We don't listen. We don't listen. Now all the wives should be saying amen real loud here, okay? I mean, you girls should give, be with me here, all right? Uh, I mean, I, I, we, we just... We, you ever been talking to somebody in a conversation with them and you can see them forming the words on their lips just waiting for you to take a breath so they can jump in? Never mind, okay. You know they're not listening. Uh, be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. I was in, we were in Florida last winter for a few weeks. I it was a garage sale and I bought me a John Wayne coffee cup, guys. <laughs> it's a big old coffee cup, John Wayne on the front of it. And uh, I bought it for two reasons. Number one, I like John Wayne and it was a dollar. So I, I bought it, right? And, and I got it and looked inside of it. And inside there's some writing. And it says, talk low and slow. And don't talk too often. Be quick to listen, slow to speak. Verse 20, here's the real clicker to that, slow to get angry. Because human anger, human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. I have to be careful, I could go on for hours here on this subject of anger, but the key to know, and just, put this, just store this in the back of your brain, is that anger, outbursts of anger, Raging temper anger is not really going to get me God's will. It's not going to work God's plan in my life. It may manipulate my family or my friends or whatever to get what I want for the moment. But it's not going to produce the righteousness that God desires. It's really not going to get me what I want. But what I need. It may get me what I want for the moment. And it is. Anger is a great manipulative controlling tool. But, but it's not going to get us the righteousness of God. What we really, really, where we need to be. Verse 21. So get rid of all filth and evil in your lives. And humbly accept God's word, the, the word that God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power to save your souls. Verse 22. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror and then walking away. Often I'll ask someone, have you ever read this book or have you ever watched that movie? We'll be talking about the shack in, in the movie. We talk, as some of you say, oh yeah, I saw that. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start sharing a part of the book or sharing a part of the movie and they'll get this puzzled look on their face. Well, I, don't, I don't remember that. It's so often we read a book and we think we got it. Uh, for me, and I can't say this for anybody else, but for me, I read a book and, and I read kind of slow. So I read through that book and I, I, I read. Many times I've gone back and read that book all over again and very few things do I really remember that I read the first time. So don't just hear something once or read, you know, and then blow it off and say, how many of you have ever gone, guys especially, how many of us has the wife told us the shopping list, a few things to get, and says, you want to write this down? No, I don't need to write it down, I'll remember it. And we get to the store and we don't remember it. So um, um, one guy's wife gave him a shopping list to go to the store and get. And uh, she numbered them over to the side, one, two, three, four, five. And he got one loaf of bread, he got two dozen eggs, he got three uh, gallons of milk, he got four. Yeah, you know, you know we, we just don't always listen. <laughs> we don't always get it. So it's really important to take time to listen. Otherwise, it's like, again, looking in that mirror and then walking away. Verse 24, see, you see yourself 
And then you walk away and you forget what you look like. Often I'll get ready to leave the house and Miriam says, you're going to go like that? Well, sure. She says, go look in the mirror. Ah, forgot to comb my hair. I still got bad hair. So, so it's easy to look and, and forget. But if we look, verse 25, if we look carefully into the Word of God, into the perfect law of God, then that law can set us free. And if we do what it says and don't forget what we heard, then God will bless us for doing it. See, it's so easy to think we know it. But the question is, is we doing it? I told you one of my favorite preacher stories. The new pastor, the new pastor goes to the new church and preaches a trial sermon, does a great job, and then so they hire him. Next Sunday, he comes up and preaches the exact same sermon. The next week, he preaches the exact same sermon. The board calls him in and says, Pastor, what is your problem? You got, don't you have any more sermons? He said, oh, i got lots of other sermons, but why should I preach something else? Do y'all start doing what I already preach? It's easy to hear it. It's easy to think we got it, but the test of whether we got it or not is, is it changing? Is it implementing? Our, our, is it altering and modifying and, and improving our behavior? So it's really, 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 really important to look carefully into God's Word. That's why it's so important that you have a daily time alone with God. Whether you're just a little daily bread or whether you actually have a devotional book. I mean, all the programming, even, you know, the AA programming, NA programming, all the, the, the most of the programming of any kind of, they want to change our behavior and help us improve our life. You, you have a daily quiet time. You have a daily reading. You have a daily time where you take a moment whether it's first thing in the morning for you or last thing at night for you or both. Whether it's a few minutes at lunch and you take a moment, pick out that daily bread. That's why we pass the daily breads out. That's why we make them available on your phone with your app. and You, you get into the Word every, every, every day. And that's something you got to do. I can preach it till I'm blue in the face. But when you start making a priority in your life, you start carefully looking into God's Word and getting, uh, get, getting and improving and spending some time. For those of you who are looking at, you know, in your career and your life and growing and your education, someone has said if you spend an hour a day, one hour a day studying any subject for five years, you'll be an expert in that subject. Taking time to set aside a time for yourself and learning. But James is a little rude. I think it goes with the name. Anyway, never mind. Just okay. Anyway, all right, never mind. Okay, hope not. Hope not. All right. Verse 26. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you're only fooling yourself. And your religion is worthless. Well, no. people, where I come from, they just say what they think. Good luck with that, honey. If I said what I thought, I'd be divorced and in jail, probably. Or dead. She'd have killed me. Just because you think it, don't say it. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't necessarily referring to you, but you know, if the shoe fits, you know what I'm saying. Um, if we don't control our tongue. And you know, what we do as Christians, and this is something all of us need to be aware of, as religious, as Christian people, we have certain Christian sins that we allow. Like gossip. Talking, running our mouth, saying language, words. We, we, we have certain sins that we allow. However, other sins, those are really bad. 
We kind of, and, and it's human nature. It's not. I'm not throwing rocks at anybody. It's human nature. We all we, we all have a tendency to justify our own behavior. In fact, many of us are professional at uh, justifying our own behavior. I mean, I, we can logically tell you why we had to do stupid. <laughs> human nature. And James says if you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, your religion's worthless. This is another whole sermon and I don't want to get too mean here I'm too bad, but I'm just you want to know what pure religion is? You want to know what true Christianity, real, genuine spirituality relationship with God? Verse 27. Verse 27 says, pure and genuine spirituality religion in the sight of God the Father means Caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt. So it's easy to be all that, say we think we all that. And I think what I'm hearing out of this today is that just be aware in your life and in my life, every one of us need to be aware. A friend of mine says, it's what you learn after you know it all. It's so easy. You just got it all. I want to conclude with, uh, Lord, let me go down, skip a couple of those, and go down to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is one of my favorite psalms in the Bible. It's the longest chapter in the entire Bible. I mean, it is like that long. It's huge. It's so big that they took the entire Hebrew alphabet and divided it up into sections. So it's like chapters in chapters and, and, and labeled them with the Hebrew alphabet of every one of the, the sections. And uh, Psalm 119, every verse, this is interesting, every verse in Psalm 119 uses the word commandments, testimonies, rules, statutes, guidelines, talks about the principles to learn guidelines, God's word, God's word in, in one form or another. Verse 161. Verse 161 in Psalm 119. Powerful people harass me without a cause, but my heart trembles only at your word. So the only thing I'm afraid of is honoring your word. Afraid of in a respectful way. Verse 162, I rejoice in your word like the one who discovers a great treasure. See, when we look at that book as a book of great treasure, of a book of instructions that will line up our life, it changes everything when we look at that book. Verse 163, I hate and abhor all falsehood, but I love your instructions. Verse 164, I will praise you seven times a day because all your regulations are just. Verse 165, those who love your instructions, oh this is powerful, this one verse will change your life. Those who love your instructions have great peace and they will not stumble. They will not be offended, one translation says. Another translation says they won't fall. If you love God's word, if you love his instructions, you'll have great peace and do not suffer. When we love God's word more than the opinion of man, more than what other people think of us, when we value what God thinks of us more than what other people think of us, we'll have great peace. And we'll listen. And that don't mean we don't value what other people think. It just means we value what he thinks more. Verse 2. 166. I long for your rescue, Lord, so I have obeyed your commands. You got two more. I've obeyed your laws, for I love them very much. Yes, I obey your commands, 168, and laws, because you know everything I do. Would you stand? I want to close with a question. I'd like you to take this question with you today. Think about it throughout this day, this afternoon, this week. Three simple words. 
Are you listening? Father God, I thank you today for your word. And I thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy to us and all our shortcomings. But God, because we are justified before you, because you have forgiven us, and you have set us apart as your people, help us, Lord. Out of a grateful heart to look into your word daily, to look into your advice, your instructions, your word daily, and to read and to grow. And each one of us, Lord, to make that decision to 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 get alone with you for just a few minutes in your word. If it's one verse a day to get some instructions from your word in our life, to value your instructions. Help us to listen, Lord. Help us to not spurn instruction. Help us to be wise, growing, becoming what you've called us to become. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Go and... And uh, guys, listen to your wives a little more, would you, Dan? <laughs>